With the end of the season coming, that means there's a new Brawl Stars update just around the corner. And with that, we should be getting some brand new gadgets. I mean, come on, we got gears before we even finished getting the second gadget for all the brawlers. That's right, there's 16 brawlers who currently don't have a second gadget. So maybe with this new update, that will completely change. So with that, here are the two best ideas for new gadgets for these brawlers. All right, now this is an idea I've always wanted in Brawl Stars, and that's basically a reload turret. Put it as a gadget, give it low health, low radius, just like Bo Supercharged Totem. I mean, in reality, in this case, it says one ammo every three seconds. So every second you get a third of an ammo. Maybe that's balanced. I'm not, you'd really have to test to find out something like that. But I mean, obviously with this, it sounds amazing. All of your teammates reload it way faster. Imagine having Piper, Brock, and Griff all together just pew, 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 pew. It would be crazy hard to stop. But of course, you're in such a small radius. Uh, anyone who does AOE damage, like a Brock gadget perhaps, I mean, it could ruin you. So while it sounds awesome, I'm not sure in practice if it would be like broken, but it could be cool. Another turret that sounds cool would be a shielding turret. Forget Pam's healing turret. You go in this turret and you get a shield. Obviously not a big shield, but in only a temporary one, but still it could be cool. Move over Bob the Builder. It's Jackie the Builder. What about this gadget idea? Jackie's gadget restores nearby broken walls. I mean, Jackie, a brawler who can attack through walls, so to speak, it kind of thrives with walls. You really don't want them broken down. She wants to approach you and then you can't do anything about it. So this could be a really good one for her. And also just sounds really cool being able to, to build up walls. We don't really have anything like that in Brawl Stars. I mean, just like, you know, it's Sprout Super. But look, here's another popular idea for Jackie on Reddit. What about unfriendly backup? Jackie pulls her glove out, showing the middle finger to all brawlers uh, nearby, dealing 5,000 damage to anyone within an eight tile radius. Now this is a community idea at its finest. Thank you. Now for Lola's gadget. The most common and popular idea is pretty much that she just swaps places with her uh, ego, her super, which honestly to me is a really great idea. It also promotes people not just putting it straight auto aim on top of them, which admittedly is the much easier thing to do. And I'm not saying you shouldn't necessarily be doing that all the time or some of the time, but in this case, you could get some really creative swaps. Or hold on, what about this crazy idea? Here, brawling with star, Lola places down a star somewhere on the map that you can't destroy. It's kind of just like an uh, on the ground like you painted it or spray painted it, whatever you want. But the way it works is when Lola dies, she spawns on that star. It could be completely broken, right? In some cases, or maybe the enemy has a Shelly camping there waiting for you to respawn. And of course, in this case, you don't get your respawn shield, which I should have said, that's a big, huge factor. You're not invincible when you go there. You spawn with one ammo and no respawn shield, but Maybe they don't, you know, pay attention. You got clueless randoms like it. Come on, that never happens, right? So, uh, it could work out. All right, how about this for Amber? Imagine huge fireballs. Yeah, okay, that's right. Spicy inhalation. In this case, Amber uses a third of her ammo bar in exchange. She spits out a huge ball of fire. I mean, first of all, I don't know exactly how it would work, but just spitting out a ball of fire that does a solid amount of damage. In this case, it goes through walls Maybe that's fine. I don't know if it entirely makes sense for fire to go through walls exactly. In some ways, maybe, but you know, they're stone walls, right? Anyways, it just sounds cool. Or another option where she recycles her puddle and the, the super, she, you know what I'm saying? If she has her super, she can recycle it into charging up her ammo bar to full. I do really like this idea just because it just fits for Amber really well. Uh, it is an interesting trade-off. Do you want to use your super to get a solid amount of damage over walls, or do you want a full ammo bar? Eh. What about for Squeak? He becomes hard. <laughs> That's right, hardened slime. In this case, Squeak takes way less damage, but he also moves slower for the next about five seconds. In this case, about 70% less damage, and he also moves like 40% slower. I think uh, it could be cool, a trade-off of you know, being able to be a little tanky, but you're not gonna be able to escape. And if you're facing like a tank or something, it might ruin you. Like in a Primo, you might not be able to deal enough damage, but maybe if they're lower health, maybe you, it'll allow you enough time to deal that damage. Or instead of becoming hardened, what about sticky blow? 
<laughs> these, I'm sorry, these names. Um, The next five attacks in this case immediately explode. I don't know about the next five attacks, but I do think a gadget where his next attacks just immediately explode might be pretty good. Although, of course, this is less necessary since he got reworked to where if you hit two shots in a row, the first one immediately explodes, but it really doesn't save that much time. Uh, maybe the next three attacks immediately explode? Meh? Now for Buzz. I really like this gadget idea. Here, for the next five seconds, when Buzz uses this gadget, he gains a 5% shield for every ally and enemy in the radius of his supercharge. So, like, this obviously would vary depending on what star power you're using, but you could potentially get up to a 25% shield, or even more, I guess, if you're in showdown. But I really like how it varies depending on how many people are actually within that radius. Or give him a more damage-oriented gadget, where in this case, he blows his whistle and sends out a shockwave of sound that damages nearby enemies and does more damage the further out it goes. Although I think actually it should be the opposite, since with sound, it's... You know, the closer you are, the louder it is. But regardless, as long as it doesn't move too fast and you can slightly escape as long as you're not like right next to him, I think it could work. Time for Ash to take out the trash. That's right, that's this gadget's name. In this case, he places down a trash can in front of him that should have a certain amount of health, kind of like a spike cactus. And when it gets destroyed, just like the spike cactus, a thing explodes out, but instead of healing allies, it gives them a damage boost for the next couple seconds. Honestly, I always love damage boost type things, so yeah, let's do it. Or you could just have Ash straight up sacrifice a small amount of health, or maybe not minor, but not a lot, 1500, and instead gain half of his rage bar, which is kind of crucial for him in a lot of ways, allowing him to get that speed and the extra damage. So you gotta calculate that risk versus reward for this guy. Now, another thing I kinda wanna see in Brawl Stars is the ability to deny supers to people. What about Snake and Drain? Byron's next attack drains part of the super of an enemy if it hits them, of course. Now, I don't know like what percentage drain is like appropriate, whether it's like 10% or like 25% or somewhere in between or wherever. But I do think this sort of mechanic would be cool to have. Or on the other side, what about a gadget that boosts Byron's ability twofold or threefold as long as he hits that shot? I do think you should probably cap it at like double the damage or healing. In this case, it consumes whatever amount of ammo you have left and adds that on to that damage or healing. Although if you go all three ammo and then you're just one-shotting someone, that would feel really, really bad. So maybe just two times. Now a good idea for Grom would be this right here where instead of his attack going in four directions, it actually goes in eight directions, which sounds insane and probably kind of broken. Uh, because you just wouldn't be able to dodge it, right? So you probably would need to reduce the damage by like 10%, 25%, something, whatever, test it, figure it out, super sell. But this would be really cool. And also some people just really hate Grom because of how frustrating he is to hit attacks with sometimes if you don't practice him that much anyways. So, uh, hey, here you go, have this. But if you don't want that, here's a really cool gadget. I don't know exactly how it worked. But you know his pin where he spins around the chain will make that his gadget where he spins around that huge ball, you know, maybe twice around him hitting nearby enemies, kind of like, you know, the gene gadget pushes enemies away. This one's not going to push them away, it just damages them slightly. They all, but only in a small nearby radius. All right, for Meg, she has that healing gadget, which is really useful, but it's not exactly fun. What about a fun one? In this case, Robit, because the name of the robot is Rob, so... Anyways, the point of it is she jumps forward with her gadget. Imagine like Dyna jump, but slightly further. Uh, I think it'd be really cool. Imagine that mech just jumping in on you and then supering you. Oh, <laughs> that sounds insane. Of course, the trade-off is you don't get to heal up the mech, so it's gonna be dying. Uh, arguably much faster, but in exchange of less health or healing, you get the mobility, which could be really cool and useful. Or another option, what about shielding herself and her teammates? So instead of healing up a solid amount of health, she still has a defensive gadget that allows her mech to be more useful, but also this gadget isn't only useful with her mech, you can use it in her normal time. Although I don't know if like instantly shielding all of your allies is kind of broken, because at least like with Barley's healing gadget where he throws out the healing puddles, it's still heals over time and you have to stay in that. So maybe if it is going to be instant shield to all allies wherever they are, 
A thousand might be a little bit too much help. But I mean, obviously, just like with all of these gadgets, you know, they're subject to balances. The numbers aren't meant to be perfect, just the concept is what counts, right? All right, hold a second. What about this insane idea for Clutch? She is obsessed with other brawlers, right? All right, so in this case, she's going to steal their attack. That's right. If you use this gadget and you hit someone, Whoever you hit your next attack is going to be their attack. You hit a dynamite, your next attack is those two dynamite sticks. You hit a bull, all of a sudden you got a powerful but incredibly short range shotgun. Although just for that next one attack. Now, this sounds incredibly complicated for like Brawl Stars to code possibly, but if they can pull this off, dude, this would be insane. Or on the other side, going along with her obsessed theme, this gadget is called I Love You. And here she gives half of her health to nearby allied brawler, all of a sudden healer Colette. And honestly, it just feels really fitting for her to just sacrifice herself for her allies. I don't know entirely if it's like that great, but it, it could be, at least it's unique. Now for Bell, what about Encrypted Lock? Where in this case, whatever enemy is marked with Bell Super, you use this gadget and that enemy gets stunned for a second and a half. Or maybe you also add on like 200 damage, 100 damage, just something so you're damaging them. But honestly, this sounds like not too bad. A little bit more of an offensive gadget for Bell. Or how about this lookout where it sounds like uh, Grom's gadget, right? But in this case, instead of actually showing you what's visible in the bushes, this lookout gadget just tells you if there's an enemy nearby. You place down that gadget and the color of it changes. It lights up if there's an enemy within radius, but it's not gonna tell you where it is so in a way it's kind of like buzz's supercharge but of course with buzz he can move around the map and kind of do it based on changing that where that radius is now in this case that is infinite health which i think they just mean it doesn't decay and that's probably actually appropriate because comparing it to grom's gadget which has an insane radius uh, it would be hard to compare if it doesn't last longer. What about for Fang, Hashuken? In this case, his next range, you know, throwing shoe or kicking shoe, I should say, it does more damage and it has a small stun. Now, of course, you're only able to even like do this if they're not within like melee range, right? So even though this would definitely be a strong gadget, you wouldn't necessarily be hitting it all the time. Another possibly insane gadget would be this right here, Kick and Heal, where when he activates this, Feng will heal for 500 health for four seconds, although I think it should probably be two seconds, but the healing duration gets increased by one second every time Feng hits an enemy with his main attack. So for example, you super someone, activate it, and then go boom, boom, boom. That's another three seconds right there. Maybe you can get a fourth second as well. But of course, you gotta be hitting your attacks, or maybe, you know, you get stunned and it just doesn't happen, or you're auto-aiming and somehow you miss, I don't know. But the whole thing is predicated on actually hitting more attacks, so I think that concept sounds really cool. All right, Surge, now his teleporter gadget is kind of broken and just useful in so many different ways incredibly hard to replace. But what about this? Power counter. In this case, he creates a shield that absorbs 40% damage, but just for the next second or maybe two. But the flip side is whatever damage he absorbs, he can send part of that back to the enemy. And I don't mean like Nani's return to sender. In this case, it adds on to his next attack. So his next attack does extra damage. So first off, he gets a shield, he absorbs the damage, and he can send it back to the enemy with his next attack. It sounds really cool. Now here's another unique idea where in this case, Surge places down an area on the map, like really small, wherever he's standing, and if an enemy walks through that small area, he gains ammo. And in this case, he can only gain up to three ammo from that puddle, uh, but, Totally unique, there's not something like that, and I like how it just ends after a certain amount of ammo. But also, of course, you could gain that ammo when you already have full ammo. So while it might sound kind of broken in some cases, it might not necessarily, but if done right, you could end up with like six shots in a row, possibly, although that sounds difficult. All right, another old but good idea. For BB, swing it. She does a 360 swing with her next attack of her bat. Personally, just kind of makes sense for BB. She already does half an arc, just make it a full arc. It's not gonna be like that much stronger. I don't know if it's necessarily strong enough for a gadget, like maybe it should add a little bit of extra damage. Like it's not like BB has a long range and it's often that you have people on both sides of you. Uh, so either small amount extra damage, like 10% or slightly wider range. Or another idea is strike out here where BB slides in. She's sliding into home plate. She's got to knock the catcher out of the way. Whoever she runs into, she knocks out kind of like a mini 
like uh, combining max gadget and adding on bull charge as well. Uh, I don't know, maybe it could work. What about a gadget called Gagging Fumes for M, where her next attack disables whatever enemy she hits from attacking or using their super for the next second and a half. So it's kind of like a stun, but you can still keep on running. Uh, maybe you can place down defensive gadgets uh, or escape away, but like you can't dare roll away with your super. Uh, and of course you can't deal them. I mean, making someone not be able to use their attack or super for a second and a half sounds really strong, but if you think about it, compare that to a one second stun, I'd say it's fairly comparable considering that you could still use your gadget or run away. Although the one possible issue with this type of gadget is, is this hard to code? I mean, what do you put on the screen so that that person who can't attack or use their super, is there like a big red X over those two icons or is it grayed out? I mean, it's definitely solvable, but I'm just not sure how the team would approach it. Or another popular idea was to just go for the straight up stun with M's next attack, but it doesn't deal any damage. So compared to Sandy's attack, right? It does do damage and it also stuns, but the difference is M's one can has a wider range. So she could maybe stun more people, it's more possible. And she can follow it up after they're stunned with a lot of damage. Unlike Sandy, who can get some pew pew out, a little bit of damage, a little supercharged, but you're not like, oh my God, Sandy, unless you're like a tick or a bee. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, check out more Rawstar videos over there. I'll catch you later. Peace.